The Legend of Zelda series has been around for about 35 years, and Breath of the Wild is the most recent entry in the mainline series. And for good reason, it has been touted as one of the defining games of this generation. Mostly because of the way that it redefined the genre of exploration games, as well as the mainline Zelda series. And so let's answer the question today, you know, who is this good for? And is it good for my kid? If you're unfamiliar with Breath of the Wild, it takes place in a fantasy world similar to Lord of the Rings, Chronicle of Narnia, that kind of medieval fantasy war realm. And you play as the hero Link who wakes up after 100 years of sleeping to find out that the bad guys won and you are tasked with regaining your memories of the events that happened and played into where you are now, as well as helping Princess Zelda who has been trapped rescue the kingdom of Hyrule. Now before we get into the whole nitty gritty of what conversations should you have with your kids before you play this and what skills they need to have in order to play it and what skills this game will help them develop, well, it would be really helpful for us if you like this video or subscribe and comment down below what other games you would like to see us cover. This game is all about exploration, experimentation, puzzle solving, and then sometimes combat. Now. This game lets you climb anything and go anywhere, assuming you have the skills, resources, and tools and can figure out how to get where you want to go. But there's usually always several different ways to solve any given problem that you're faced with. This game engine is physics based and there's a lot of problem solving that goes along with it. For example, you get tools such as the ability to affect things that are metal with your magnetism skills. Um, there are things like fire, water, electricity, and how all of those things kind of play together with the environment that you find yourself in and how it can be a benefit to you or it might be a liability in some cases. For example, if I shoot an electrically charged arrow into this water, it will affect a larger area and be more effective than just directly hitting my intended target. On the flip side, if I'm wearing some metal sword on my back, then it's very likely that I'm going to get hit by lightning in a thunderstorm. This game is great for problem solving as I said before, and here's another example of that. There's multiple ways to do the same thing. I could climb this wall if my stamina is high enough, or I can walk around and climb up the path. Or I can light a fire underneath me, which creates an updraft, and I can ride up there with my parachute. This is just one of many examples. Risk assessment is also a really large part of this game. From the beginning of the game after the tutorial section, you can pretty much set out to go beat the main baddie. You will be woefully under equipped, under skilled, and unprepared for what's going to happen on your way there even. And if you manage to get there, you're probably going to get beat up real bad. Now that's not to say that uh, this game is punishingly difficult. It's still possible, but you're gonna get better the more you live in this world, the more you discover, the more you explore, you'll be way more prepared to handle what this game is going to throw at you. And this kind of risk assessment scales down throughout the game. There are some enemies that you can pick off very quick with one arrow if you hit them in the right spot, but there are other enemies that will kick your butt over and over and over again, and you're gonna have to come to them and figure out do I wanna be stealthy here? Do I wanna set traps? Or do I wanna run in with my sword out and fight them head on? Or you even ask, is this even worth attempting at this point? Now here's some things that me as a parent, I've decided these are the things that I would talk about with my daughter when it comes time for her to play this game. This game is rated T for teen, and that's just a guideline. And those are pretty good starting points. Sometimes T rated games, you should definitely be waiting till way into your teenage years to allow your ch children to play. Other games are good a little bit before then, and I think this falls into that category based on my personal experiences with it. Now, some things that you should have a conversation about, possibly with your children, are things like that there's mild use of magic in this game, there is a lot of mythology in this game as well. You live in a world and there's a lot of world building that you discover about the ancient races, these mythological uh, lowercase g gods, those kinds of things uh, where you interact with a lot of people and statues and other things in this world uh, where that comes into play. That being said, there is some voice acting in this game. So if your child doesn't know how to read, they can get the main narrative of the story. However, I think it's going to be extremely difficult for your child to play through this game if they cannot read. All of the interactions outside of the main storyline, like mission quests and non-playable characters that you interact with in the world, uh, you kind of need to be able to read to know what they're asking you to do or trying to sell you or having conversations about and dropping hints your way. I don't think anything ever really gets too scary in this game. The final boss is a bit grotesque, but 
That's fine, it's not anything bloody or gory like that. Speaking of blood and gore, there isn't any in this game. Uh, most of the enemies are uh, monsters or some weird skeletons or pig animal things, and you can hunt in this game uh, for food and resources. However, if you shoot a monster and he dies, they just kind of blow up in a poof. And if you shoot a pig and you need some meat, also, poof, they're gone and the meat replaces them where they stood. Now there's only ever a few human enemies in this game. There's never any blood or gore. You never see a human die in this game that you are attacking. So uh, this clan of ninjas always comes and tries to ambush you as you're exploring the world. Uh, and when you beat them, they just kind of like poof away and throw down a little thing. In terms of challenge, this game is great in terms of its scalability. If you want to play it as a leisurely pace, there will be some pushback. If you want to take on optional side quests and missions and 100% the game, you will be challenged greatly and be forced to develop your skills. Uh, but most of these challenges that will kick your butt are optional side quests and you can prepare pretty well if you take the time uh, to gather resources, make sure you're well equipped, those kinds of things will make any challenge in this game just a little bit easier to handle. My personal recommendation for this game based off mine and my wife's experiences with it is that I would recommend this to any child who's around the age of 10 or older. Uh, assuming that you have some of these conversations going into the game if you think any of them are red flags for you and your family. Because of the challenge level, this might not be the best first game for your child to start with. If you have a 10 year old and you're like, here's a Switch and Breath of the Wild, I would definitely recommend starting with something else uh, that really kind of holds your hand uh, as you progress through the game. This is a game that has a lot of challenge and skill development, so I would save this for a child who has played some video games in the past. Talking point guide is in a link down in the description. It's a PDF so you can print it out and it'll give you some basic overview of this game and some great talking points so that you can have conversations over dinner about what your child is experiencing while they play this game. It'll also get you some pretty good brownie points too if you let them know that you care about what they're experiencing. If you found this video helpful and you don't want to subscribe, give it a thumbs up. It's free. If you want to subscribe, that really helps us and use the links down in the description of this video as that helps supports the channel. The best thing you could do is share this with a friend or family member who also has kids and is looking for a game recommendation or a parent's perspective on games that you should play. Also, we do a lot of let's plays and live streams on this channel that are targeted towards people who have kids. Um, so if you're thinking about checking out what Breath of the Wild is kind of like before playing, maybe check out one of those videos that's going to pop up on the screen right when I'm done talking.